How y'all doing? Welcome to another edition of Mr. Parker's Neighborhood. I am Mr. Parker, and today, my guest today is Mr. Kevin Hopkins. How are you, sir? Doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Good to see you. Now, before we get started, Kev, I always do a, a little something with the, with the viewers, and it's called, Can You Guess What My Guest Does? So, here we go. Here's, here's your, your uh, uh, here are your guesses. A, is he an entrepreneur? B, is he a jazz musician? C, is he an extract star? D, is he a teacher? Or E, two of the above? Do, 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 do. All right, y'all guess is wrong, as usual, so don't worry about it. Scott, Kevin, can you tell the people what it is you do? All right, so uh, yes, I am an entrepreneur. Um, I was not a track star, although I did run track in junior high school, never lost a race, but I never won a race either. So I guess, you know, <laughs> hey, and um, yes, yes, I am um, a teacher of sorts. I work for school district 189. I work as a parent educator, which is basically a case manager for the district, but I'm also, and I would think more so than any of those things, a, um, a visual artist, a uh, creative spirit, as you, you know, would probably say. So yeah, a little bit of everything. Oh, and you say jazz musician. I love jazz music and I've messed around with music. So maybe I'm a jazz musician too. <laughs> <laughs> like I say, I threw all those elements that I knew of in there to throw mess with the people. But uh, right. yeah, man, it's good to see you, sir. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about where you from? You from St. Louis, East St. Louis, where you from? All right, so I, I grew up in East St. Louis. Now I was born in St. Louis because I guess at the time, that's the hospital my mom chose St. Mary's in St. Louis, but I grew up in East St. Louis and I lived here until I graduated high school, which was Lincoln High School back in 1985. From there, I went on to Illinois State University and I graduated in 91 with a, um, a degree in fine arts. And after I graduated, all of my family had moved from Illinois to St. Louis. So I lived in St. Louis from 91 up until about two years ago. So I'm from East St. Louis and St. Louis, you could say. <laughs> okay. And um, so now in high school, mm -hmm. you said now high school is where you, it was junior high you ran track or grade school, which one was it? Junior high school ran track, yep, for he was Quinn. Mm -hmm. Okay. In high school, did you do any sports activities in high school? No sports in, in high school. I That's when I kind of found myself in the um, the art field, the art discipline. Um, I had taken some mechanical drawing classes and some fine art classes. And really, that's where I started to kind of get the momentum that I needed to major in art in college. And so I guess from there, you know, my career path was pretty much determined. And, you know, I haven't really looked back since. Okay. Now in college, you said you went, so you went to Illinois, Illinois State University in Normal, okay. Illinois, mm -hmm. and you majored in majored in fine art. Now I started off as a double major, um, communication and fine art. But about my junior year, um, I switched over to fine art exclusively with um specification and photography, and that was really because. After I, you know, saw all the things that you could do with photography and the detail that you could capture, um, it made me ask myself, why am I trying to draw with such detail when I can take a picture and have the detail I've been looking for in an instant? So it was photography from that point on until maybe two years after I graduated um, and started getting into the job market, then I had to switch over to the um, graphic design discipline. Okay, so yeah, like what I'm about to say, so because I remember you did a little drawing, so you still so so graphic art was the first beginning, and then photography kicked in. Absolutely, absolutely, and and with the graphics, you know, I'll tell you, even that started before high school. Um, when I was in the third grade, I entered a contest that was sponsored by the Metro East Journal, right. They had a, um, a contest for a Christmas drawing. And I won first prize in that contest. And they sponsored or they featured my illustration in the newspaper. The principal at the school um, showed up in my classroom and gave me a watch, you know, and everybody, all the other students clapped for me. And 
I was like, hey, there, there might be something to this art thing. And from that point, I think I started taking it serious. Um, but it was at that point, too, that I think my family started to look at it a little bit more seriously, as did the teachers that I would have further down the road. Okay. So now, so like I said, we said in high school. Now in high school, were you were you the quiet, cool kid that you are now? Or, or, or and I was a nerd. I'm still a nerd. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I was completely into books, man. Okay. You know, um, watched Wild Kingdom. I watched all the superhero movies and all that kind of stuff, video games, all that nerd stuff. And, you know, and, and I loved it. I didn't think that there was anything other than that, really. Right, right. Until I got to college and, and that's when I was exposed to, you know, as the television series, A, a Different World, right? So up until then, nerddom was my kingdom, right? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, you look, I was in the PBS club too. <laughs> right, there you go. Nothing wrong with it, man. Nothing hey, wrong with it. got a chance to watch all that good, uh, and all British television. Monty yeah, Python and all that stuff. Python, that's right. <laughs> Benny Hill, all that good stuff. Sail Black H. <laughs> I was going to let you see if you said Benny Hill or not. <laughs> hey, you know, look, it, that was, now for us, you know, that was late night television, yes, right? Sir. <laughs> and, and it was It was a little bit on the edge, but not so far over the edge to where we could really interpret what was going on. Yeah. Nowadays, you know, it's, it's all the way over the it's edge. It's all the way over the edge. Now, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we used to watch Benny Hill at night just See if we were gonna see some breasts. Right, right, right. That, and that was that was dirty television for us. <laughs> because we laugh about the whole thing of television where, but my grandmother and me talk about how you never saw uh, um, anybody with their feet off the floor in the bedroom when they were when she was little. Wow. I say, wow, that's that, that's what's wrong with that? Well, they thought you were doing. Ooh, wow. well, they don't want to watch our TV. <laughs> Right, man. Isn't it funny how times change? You know, the, the norms or the values just kind of keep getting pushed along. And yeah. so who knows where we'll be in another 10, 20 years. Hey, but you know, that's maybe a conversation for a different time. I don't yeah. know. Man, look, you look, you, you said it right though, because I remember in college they gave us a a, a thing in one of the one of the school newspaper my freshman mm -hmm. year, and it says in 19, I think it said 1970, 1970. They say mm -hmm. put your rubbers on, and they meant the boots. In 1987, oh, yeah. they put your rubbers on, and they meant condoms. <laughs> right, right. Isn't that something, man? Hey, you know. <laughs> hey, now who knows what it? <laughs> hey, now, I, look, I don't even know what it means now. I don't even know if they use them now, for real. <laughs> it may be a thing of the past. Yeah, now, now you say, yeah, you got your rubbers. Mm, rubber bands. <laughs> right, right. I have no idea what's going on out there. I don't even think I want to know, man. My head yeah. might explode. So, like you said, so in so in high school we gathered. We were we were all in that that neat. And you know, now nah, for you, you just you stated it in high school, and I and I run. We had to one be able to articulate your name correctly. Mm -hmm. Two, you had to be at least a B student for mm -hmm. any girl to look at you. Right. And three, you had to look like something. Your, your clothes couldn't be dirty or, or holy or nothing like that. Mm -mm. This, this. <laughs> now, man, look, now it's almost like the worse you look, the better. <laughs> you, uh, the better your status is. And you know, it's, it's strange how that is, man. I don't know how I would describe it in, in a sense, you know, as a creative person, I can see that need for a person to be an individual, to be themselves, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but when you have so many people that start to dress and look a certain way, the individualism is removed and you become part of the crowd that you right. were probably trying to escape from in the first place. <laughs> so now that individual is the norm. And so now I would say that the person who would be more of an individual would be the person that dresses a bit more sharply than, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, you know, that's just my crazy way of thinking. I don't know. Call me, call me nuts, man. Look call here. me stupid. I don't know. Now you look, you're right, cause uh, 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 like you said, based on how we've coming up as 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 the, I said, I want to say the, between the eighty late eighties and early nineties, that's when. Everybody was doing the camouflage jackets and the, right. and the boots, and you, yeah, they 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 weren't they were still ironing their pants a little bit, but it wasn't yeah. a real biggie on it. 
Now it's just, hey, put them on, throw them on. So, yeah, for mm -hmm. us to come out in some jeans, and, and like I said, I got my, I still get my jeans creased at the at the cleaners. So, yeah. the, uh, uh, so the young fellas come out, hey, OG. I'm like, oh, mm, I guess I am, because I got creases in. Look, <laughs> if, you, look, if you got creases and you wearing a belt, you definitely owe us. <laughs> look, I mean, there's there's a few more indicators. If you if your draw is not showing, you probably an OG, right? <laughs> so, I mean, that's just so, so in, 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 in going to college, I said we got your major going. Then um, while you were there, uh, I see you got a little something behind you. Did, yeah, did, yeah, did, did, yeah. Did you, did you do a little? You do a little something while you was there. <laughs> a, little, a little bit of something while I was there. A little bit of something while I was there. So, you know, now coming from, now I'll, I'll say this, you know, again, this kind of speaks back to the whole um, nerd component of my life, right? Mm -hmm. There were a lot of um, dance groups and a lot of familiarity with fraternities and sororities in East St. Louis, but I did not have that exposure. So when I got to campus, I had no idea what a fraternity was, a sorority was, any of those types of groups. My first, um, the first exposure that I remember was at a party, right, at the Bone Student Center, seeing a bunch of guys jumping around the party in a circle, right? And I'm thinking, who, who, hey, what, <laughs> a dance battle, you know? And no, and somebody said, oh, that's a frat, that's, you know? And so that was my first exposure, you know? And that kind of piqued my curiosity as to what fraternity life and everything was about. So um, in 87, I went to um, what was called a smoker then um, mm -hmm. to the campus. They were just coming back on the yard. And so, you know, I listened to the things that the brothers had to say, and they were talking about the community service component and their, you know, the striving for achievement and just the things that they need to do to support the Black community. And so that appealed to me, I think, really because of the fact that I was from East St. Louis and I saw that there were so many things that needed to happen in the city and so many things that my classmates and I had talked about wanting to change once we became adults, that that seemed like the natural move for me. Now, there were other fraternities on the yard at the time, but I, I didn't really know anyone that was in another fraternity and my friends were kind of leaning in that direction. So I went out of um, their interest and in kind of following them, but, you know, as, as things sometimes happen, I was the only person from that group at the time that was selected to pledge. And so, you know, I've been, you know, not always active since then, but always in the spirit of since okay. then. Well, yeah, so like, like, well, like you said, and you highly always go, you go there yeah. with a friend to see what it's about. And they're like, hey, we want you. I'm, I'm with him. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, it's strange, man. You know, now I will say this. Eventually, um, one of the people that wanted it the most got in as well, and he is definitely a good brother. And um, But it just happens for different people at different times. And I will say this. It's not for everybody. It's right. a lot of work. You know, it's a lot of commitment. I would say the expectations um, from others seem to be high, and they should be high because what you represent when you wear those letters, in my opinion. Now, you know, have we kind of gone a little bit away from what the original purposes was? Maybe so, but times have changed, right. you know, but we always have to keep in mind how we look in the eyes of the public. Yes, sir. And like you said, it, it was, I'm like you, I came, I came there and mm -hmm. uh, all I had heard was when I came to Central Missouri State, all I knew going to college was Omegas, Omegas, Omegas. I'm there and I'm looking, I'm meeting the brothers and it was so funny because uh, a first brother I met was an Omega uh, okay. named Rusty. Me and him was cool. The second brother I met was the brother who kept me at Central Missouri. So I was about to leave because mm -hmm. stuff at home was going crazy. I'm like, man, I need to go to the crib. And a brother from Kappa Alpha Psi, Calvin Jones, okay. told me, look here, man, I need you to stay here and I'm going to show you some stuff. And brother, from that point on, between the choir he was taking me to Southeast Missouri State on the regular. I met the Kappa House because I'm with him. So I'm like, I'm right. getting free passes. I'm like, hey, 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 right. come on. You fret? No, no, no. I'm 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 with him. <laughs> <laughs> and then we came back to school. Every time we got ready to leave, it was a brother from Five Beta Sigma named Jordan Morgan. He told mm -hmm. my mother two years in a row, your son gonna be a Sigma. The first mm -hmm. year I got to call mom tomorrow. What is that? I said, don't pay no attention. You we all right, don't worry about it. I ain't pledging that. Right. 
Second year, he came again. I'm like, she said, now the second time this boy done said this to us, do, do you know something? That, I am not pledging that lady. I'm fine. I said, because Omega's wasn't on the yard, so I ain't doing nothing. Right. And that third year was like, mm, everybody I knew was Sigmas. Who I was uh -huh. hanging out with Sigma was like, hey, let's see what they're talking about. I came right. home. Well, I came home, just my uh so he was right, huh? I said, I, I guess mama, after three years, three years, I guess he was the one that knew what was going on. But I yeah, mean, man, yeah. but it was so, but but in 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 that fraternal order, mm -hmm. it's the fact of once you get in any of them, the mm -hmm. brotherhood and the camaraderie that goes, even in the Mr. Jonin, is mm -hmm. still family because. Everybody knows that if you came through them years, mm -hmm. you came through. What none right. is what none is I paid four hundred dollars and ta -da. <laughs> right, 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 for sure, man. And I'll tell you this, you know, the the brotherhood is still there. You know, I would say that you have different levels of it now, you know, as a, an older person, you know, I just turned 54. Um but as an older person, I see those years as something different than the way I see um, my service to the fraternity and to the community now. But each um, aspect of it played a particular role and a needed role at the time in my life. You know, so now when I look back at, you know, people that I encountered way back then, I see how young we were and maybe in some ways how naive we were mm -hmm. and some things that we could have done differently. And I say to myself, man, if I could speak back to that younger me, I would have said, hey, do this a little differently, do this a little differently. But the one thing that I would not have changed was you know, being a part of the organization because that set up the foundation for so many friendships and so many things that I've gone on to do later in life. Yeah, yeah. Now, what, what number were you on your line? Well, you know, my line was a little different. Now, I was the captain of my line, you know, but there were 11 of us, and I was number four on the line. Now, you know, we came in, you know, I, I don't want to give the sort of history, but let's just say the brothers was off the yard for about five years before I came through. <laughs> so we had to be brought in in a conventional slash non-conventional <laughs> way, right? And so... I was the captain pretty much in the middle of the line. So I'm giving instruction to the left and to the right, you know. But hey, you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, hey, hey I just say, cause that's that's something we joke about as far as because I was a I was the one. So we like, uh -huh. yeah, the aces, the deuces are talking about, oh, we you needed us, the trades are talking about the choirs. So well, we are uh -huh. here. Hold up, no, no, no. You can't be a one. Unless a one ain't there. So, no, no, we could no, you, if you're a four, you're a four. If you're a right. one, you're one. I say, but now if you're a four and the one, two, and three ain't doing nothing, then yeah, you gotta be the one because they ain't helping you, they gonna hurt you. So okay, I give you that. All right. <laughs> I, can, I can understand how you was the captain and you was a four. I understand that. Yeah. But um, now, so like I said we mentioned as far as 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 fraternity wise, how things all with people now using that as you came out of of school and graduated what was the next move for care what did what did, what did you end up doing next man it was rough i'll tell you I, I learned a hard lesson after i got out of college man and that is that unfortunately college does not prepare you for everything you know i thought you know or the the conversation that i had been hearing prior to that was go to college so you can do this with your life so that you can do that with your life College will give you the foundation of the education, but it does not always give you the experience that you need to break into the job market. And I found that um, to be true, definitely in my case. So after making um, attempts to get several jobs in the creative arts fields and not having any doors open for me, I decided to go back to school, community college, right? Okay. I had specialized in photography and Forest Park Community College had a, um, a photography program that was more or less run by professionals in the industry. So with that, I knew I could get a real world view of what I needed to learn to get into the industry. And after about a year and a half of classes there, I was able to break into the job market through what's now um, defunct, a defunct company, May Company 
made corporation. Oh, I started there. I started as a, a printer in the photo lab. I was making the point of um, sale signage. Okay, okay. I moved up to layout artist in the advertising department. And then eventually I became an art director for a corporate um, over all the 10 divisions that they had throughout the country. Oh, man. So it was, it was good. And I had a, about a 25 year career in advertising and marketing, not just with May Company, with the St. Louis American, with the National Association of Electrical Distributors, with A Magazine, and a few other companies around the St. Louis, Illinois area. Oh man, okay. See, I see. I didn't know that about you, Kay. I didn't know that. Look at that. Yeah. Now, now, let's go. Do you remember when we first met? I do. I do. This would have been um, at Jamestown Mall. <laughs> now. The strange thing is this, so when we met, right, I was coming off of a stint with a company, right? I, you know, here, let me let me just set it up for you. As a creative person, right, we have egos. And when we make contributions to certain companies and we don't feel justly compensated, you know, we have a tendency to fly off and be like, you know what, I quit, I'm gonna start my own business. So that's kind of what happened with me, right? <laughs> so when we met, I was leaving the company because I did not feel justly compensated. And I said, I'm gonna start my own business. I saw something that you and Horace posted and it was, you were looking for a person to kind of bring a photography component into the video studio that you all were running. And so we met at Jamestown Mall, which is where you all already had a space set up. And it was like, hey, you know, let's, let's go ahead and do this. You know, we have this, you have this, let's make it complete. So that's that's where it began. Yeah, and I don't even know how long ago that was. Man, that was uh that was what was that 90? It had to be like 90. No, what was it? it had to be like was it 2000 is because I think my daughter no, was already yeah, born. It was yeah, it was about two it was 2000 so I'm sorry, because I was at okay. I had been at uh I was at Shalom. Mm -hmm. I had been there, maybe we had just built the new, so they're like 2000 and I want to say three. Okay. It's like, 2000, it's like 2003, I think, okay. something like that. Okay. Because I was, matter of fact, cause I was married and living around the corner then. So about okay. 2003. But um, yeah, but me and Hawes were laughing because, because like I said, when he put the, put the ad out and you came in, it was like, when, when you broke out and came to the door, it was somewhat me and him come up. That's the dude right there. That's him. That's, that's the guy. <laughs> and, we, it, and it was crazy because we both said the same thing. We're like, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, he the one. Like he go, he the one to bring on through. And then when you came in the mix, man, it was like I say it was a beautiful thing, man. We appreciate because the chemistry was just, it was just smooth. It was like I right, horse was doing that, such, 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 such. He's like, dog, but I need to, I got that. I'm doing such, such, such. Oh man. Well, Kev, you said I got that all. Oh. And it was just the way the wheel worked. It's like. Absolutely. It, man. it all came together, man. Just, I mean, it's, you know, I'm a spiritual person, man, and I definitely believe in a, a higher power and, and a plan, right? And so I think that everything happens in due season. And so that definitely came together when it needed to come together. For sure. Yeah, like I said, I mean, and, and again, for us to learn from you how to do photo, photos, and how to do Photoshop and all that, and then to show you how to do video, and, mm -hmm. and, Again, Horace, I told him, I said, man, you know what? I said, you want them, you want them cats that when you learn something, you say, Horace, I'm like, yeah, I was like, he was like, yeah, let's do something else, let's do something else, let's do, cause when he came up, we talked about that whole pictures on the disc. Uh-huh. When he came up with that, we was like, man, you was like, man, that, 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 man, that could be, that could be a killer there. And it was like, we were doing it, and he was like, wait a minute, hold on. We like we need to go up to Walgreens and say, look, we need to get some more money on this car. We were sending everybody, mom, up to Walgreens. Right, right, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Giving them they, their images on the disc. <laughs> if, you want them, if you want us to print them out, it's gonna cost you this much. If you want to print them out on your own, you're gonna pay less of a cost, right? But we were definitely turning them around. That was it. I mean, that, like I said, and, and and if it wasn't for James Sound doing what it did, I think Man. we would we we'd had a little we'd been able to run a little bit longer. And, and and do some other stuff. Absolutely. Now, so this is the thing, man, you know, timing is everything. I mean, we definitely brought a good product to market. There is no doubt about that. I don't think anybody that came through the studio can argue against that. You know, we came up against some times 
that we were not really prepared for. You know, for those that don't, that don't know, back at the in the day that we were in our heyday in Jamestown, digital photography was it was there, but the thing that had not really fully developed was cell phone photography. Yeah. And that was slowly taking the place of the digital professional digital photography. And now we run into a, a situation where everybody with a cell phone also had a pretty decent camera. Right. <laughs> and we were in competition with not just local photographers and videographers, but everybody that had a cell phone. Because now everybody thinks that they're a portrait photographer with that cell phone yeah, yeah. on her, you know, with a camera on their cell phone. And so we were up against that. We were up against the dying mall and an economy that was, you know, failing. Yeah. And so we were up against a lot of things. And I think we gave it like a good three-year run. Yeah, we did. Okay. We did. The three-year run, man. And, and I agree. Had the mall been able to pull in some other businesses, we might still have been there. It would have made a big difference in the community. But, you know. Because even, I mean, even in that time, like you said, that time we were there, when we did that, quiet as it's kept, businesses around us start mm -hmm. sending people in to see what we were doing. And then all of a sudden you see y'all, you see Sears offering this and I'm like, wait, right. oh man, that was us. <laughs> right. I mean, so we were on the edge of it, man. We were, we were definitely rolling with the tide. You know, we just could not fight the tide of the mall closing. Right. That was it. If the mall had been able to hold on a little bit longer, we'd have been all right. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. And now in doing all that, as far as as uh um people that you have worked with. And like I said, yo, 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 I mean, after that, you went into, like I said, you went into doing the art shows, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's something that never really stopped, man. I was, I've always had that passion for art, like I said, since um a child, you know, three years old is when I got that first recognition, or third grade, rather, is when I got that first recognition. But I know I've been doing artwork well before that. And it's just something that's in my heart, you know, all through high school, all through college, I've been, you know, drawing, you know, making sketches, putting them away, putting them away and eventually getting to painting them. And so that's the point that I'm at now in my career, you know, where I'm pulling out all those sketches from all the years and making paintings of those sketches. And so that's something that I hope to continue to do throughout the rest of my life, you know, to establish a body of work um, that I I can leave behind as a legacy, you know, as proof of my life here, you know, uh, a show of my talents that God has given me, you know, and I love doing it. And so what I've been able to do now is just kind of through all the interactions I've had with different businesses was be was to get opportunities to kind of spread that knowledge to different um, individuals and different children through different um, schools and community programs. And so I'm loving it, man, I do. You know. Now, see, and, and, and I'm I'm feeling bad. I'm going to have to figure out how can I get this because you went into music, did some, did some music writing and playing and stuff. <laughs> Horace has just did some music. He did some rapping and stuff. Okay. I yeah. got to do something now because I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute, Kevin and Horace and Hold on, y'all can't, y'all ain't supposed to leave your boy like that, but yeah, yeah, okay. You got to do it, man. <laughs> Look, I'm going to tell you this, Cecil, man. As, as a creative person, all those components are within you, man. It's just a matter. You're going to eventually touch on everything creative. You're going to touch on sculpture. You're probably going to touch on basket weaving, all that kind of stuff, because it's in you. That, that creative spirit just won't go. It's just a matter of how you are able to express yourself at the time. You know, now you always going to have your go-to, but you're going to dabble in all these other little things, you know, along the way, for sure. Look, look, oh, look, look I, I have. Look, like I said, like I said, you used to sing and all that stuff. So uh -huh. sang in choirs and school yeah. and college and all that. Yeah, I, like uh -huh. I, said, I done done it, but now you you cast have made songs. So I got to go ahead and get out and write my own little song. And I got me a, got me a few musician people. I done played, like I, said, I done played the trumpet, a little bit of piano. So, yeah, I got to figure out how to get in that in that groove. Like, yeah, I said, boy. I mean, I mean, Horace, have you heard Horace's rap? No, nah. hold up. You know, I take that back. A couple of years ago, yeah, he did. I did see something he posted online. Yes. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, Horace, yeah, Horace got, uh, he got two two out there now. 
Okay. Um, that I, that I ran on the show when I me and him did the interview, and I say, man, H H, like I said, I'm just glad to know you and him, man. Because I mean, you can't <laughs> you can't help me to continue to do like like yeah, I just yeah, we sit there and he was sitting, he was like interviews on, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. I did a little something. I said, I love these cats because you and him, boy. And another thing about it too, I couldn't be cool as you and Hawes. You you and Hawes was just when they came when they came into the studio. It was like, Hall was like, hey, how you doing? He, he all missed him, hey, how you doing? And, I, and I'm sitting there, hey, all right. And you like, hey. Like, <laughs> and then I said,